Welcome to the first lecture on cloud computing. Today we are going to talk about high performance computing and how cloud computing makes high performance computing possible. So what is high performance computing? What are the salient aspects of high performance computing? These are the salient aspects of high performance computing. So let us go one by one and try and elaborate a little bit about each one of them. First is parallel processing. Now what is parallel processing? The ability to break a big task into smaller tasks and being able to do those smaller tasks uh, individually on different machines is called parallel processing. And uh, this ability is implicit in the definition of high performance computing. Take a big task, split it into smaller tasks and each task happens individually. Now obviously, so, so to depict parallel processing, you have a big task, let us call this task big. You need to split it into smaller tasks and let us take that example further. So this is ST1, small task 2, small task 3. Uh, obviously we need advanced processors because uh, each of these small tasks have to run very fast and most of the time these are very compute intensive tasks. So each of these tasks would need either a GPU uh, or CPU cores. Uh, so we will need each one will run either on a GPU with multiple cores or uh, on CPU's cores differently. So uh, each one would be running on the GPU. I mean all of them could share a GPU too because a GPU has multiple cores. So that is also possible and let me just notionally put GPU cores here. So all of these can run on GPU cores uh, simultaneously. Uh, the other uh, reason or the other aspect of uh, high performance computing is uh, currently let us say we have three GPU cores deployed and the task has been split this way. Uh, it may so happen that these tasks will increase their complexity, will increase their uh, computing power or computing requirement. So in that case, am I able to give more memory to this? Am I able to give more cores to this? All that would mean I have a scalable architecture. And high performance computing needs a scalable architecture because the ability to scale from let us say 10,000 requests to a million request is necessary uh, in high performance computing. So today I may have uh, only let us say 1 gig memory, 1 gig memory and 1 gig memory here, I should be able to scale it up uh, almost seamlessly. Then comes the issue of high speed storage. Now high speed storage also means that uh, uh, high speed networking. So high speed networking means that often these tasks need to communicate with each other. Sometimes they have to share data, sometimes there is some kind of a semaphore requirement amongst tasks. So when tasks need to share data or they need to collaborate with each other, uh, we feel the need for high speed networking. So that is also has to be woven in into the fabric for high performance computing. Also since these tasks are compute intensive and they generate a lot of data, they consume a lot of data and in turn they produce a lot of data. So when they are being so data intensive, we need large scale storage at their back. So these are all connected to large uh, disk, large uh, disk capacity uh, which may be needed. Uh, this large capacity may come from a storage area network or that may come in any other way. So there is need for large scale storage, you need lot of storage because there are lot of computing power and that is lot of data being consumed and lot of data being produced, so you need all of that. The algorithms have to be organized towards distribution. Almost always this means a rewrite of the code. For example, the code will have to be altered to become, uh, to uh, change from a single track monolithic code to smaller uh, threads and each thread runs independently. So somebody has to take that big code and split it into smaller pieces so that each code will run individually. So we require optimized software and algorithms which is tailored 
to run for this environment. Some of this happens nowadays automatically, but a lot of it either in the form of libraries or otherwise has to be rewritten. Now, because so much of compute power is being used, there is obviously going to be a large expenditure of electricity and energy. So, these systems, especially HPC systems, have to be extremely sensitive to uh, energy efficiencies. Otherwise, the energy bills of these companies or the data centers where this is uh, available, this infrastructure is available, is going to skyrocket. We do not need that to happen. Uh, I do not have to emphasize reliability and fault tolerance because having a very high priority task running in a parallel mode, uh, we obviously need reliability and fault tolerance because if, if for some reason this goes bad, let us say, automatically this ST1 will have to migrate to some other core or it, it will have some redundant GPU cores running here. So, if this, this is malfunctioning, automatically it has to migrate here. So, we need reliability and we need fault tolerance. As far as possible, we do not want the GPU cores to go down, but if they go down, the task should migrate seamlessly to other GPUs. So, we need that. Diverse applications, today this high performance uh, computing is used for several applications ranging from computational fluid dynamics to lot of generative uh, AI based applications to lot of applications in uh, biology, genomics, uh, lot, of, lot of these applications need huge amount of parallel computing in order to do their task and uh, there is diverse applications and quite often there is lot of scope for customization because uh, it is rarely one size fits all uh, in the sense the GPU cores might have to be customized. Uh, sometimes the application will have to be customized, sometimes the architecture has, has to be customized. So, these are the, uh, uh, in a nutshell, these are the features of high performance computing. Now, we are going to discuss why cloud computing is a solution for high performance computing. Now, what does cloud computing bring to the table? First thing it brings is scalability. Now, we just mentioned that one of the things in high performance computing is you lot need lot of GPU cores. And I also told you that sometimes you need to go from 10,000 requests to a million requests. That is possible only if you can G get GPU cores on demand, if you can get more CPU cores on demand. If you need more CPUs on demand, more GPUs on demand, you need a cloud because then in cloud you just say I want to pay more, I am ready to pay more, give me more compute power give me more GPUs than what are available, I want to run a big LLM, give me more GPU power, it gives you more GPU power. Of course, it comes at a price, but all of that is available. Uh, the second advantage of a cloud computing solution is cost e effective. Just imagine uh, in a college like KMIT or NGIT, if I have to create a high performance uh, computing cluster of GPUs and all, it is going to cost me a lot of money. Uh, instead, what I can do is, I can go to Amazon, ask for their high performance computing cluster and just rent it whenever I need it. So, whenever our students want to run a task, basically they can go there, uh, connect to an AWS account, run their task and be done with it. So, it is the classic pay per use model, uh, otherwise high performance computing is going to be extremely expensive. Uh, so, so, that is the cost effectiveness. Uh, Accessibility means, uh, is it accessible all time in the year uh, at 24 by 7 at home? Uh, yes, it is because it is hosted on a cloud, the entire HPC cluster uh, runs on the cloud and because it is on the cloud, it can be available anywhere, anytime as long as you have an account and you are having an internet connection, you can uh, pretty much access resources whether you are in college or in a company or at home. Uh, Obviously, there is a reduced infrastructure burden. I basically, the only infrastructure I need is my laptop and I connect to the cloud, I get a high performance system, I get a whole bunch of GPU cores along with high amount of storage, high speed networking, all of that uh, and, and I, I have to uh, get, uh, my infrastructure burden is a, just a laptop most of the time. Uh, rapid deployment, yes, because I do not have to uh, do any setting up, I do not have to uh, create a cluster, I do not have to 
you know set up anything i don't have to uh, provision the course i don't have to enable anything it's just up there for running it's just like electricity you know press a button and it's available like that i get high performance computing on demand uh, rapid deployment obviously follows from that point that it's very quick to deploy because there's nothing much i'm deploying i'm just asking for a bunch of resources i'm saying this is the kind of uh, profile of my application give me these kind of resources and there they are advanced technologies as technologies change better cpu cores come uh, better uh, gpu cores come uh, you move from a100 to some other machine a uh, higher amount of capacity all of that comes to me uh, i don't have to upgrade anything all the advanced technology which nvidia or some other company which is the provider of the cloud or amazon uh, or anyone uh, whatever they are giving i can immediately use uh, uh, customization and specialization is possible because today let's say you are working with an llm you can customize the llm the llm itself may be hosted on the network the large language model but i would like to fine tune it to my data i can do that only the fine tuning part is the thing i pay for and i need to customize that uh, energy efficient it is not taking any energy from me all the energy is running in the amazon data centers or the third party data centers <coughs> it's not adding any uh, efficiency load on me i am not consuming my my carbon footprint is not increasing and all of that so so that is a very big uh, effect uh, data management and storage i don't have to care about data management storage i don't have to be responsible that this data got lost or this data i forgot to take a backup i just paid for the storage i expect that the storage will be there i just sign a agreement for storage to be replicated in two three places and that is all that has to be done i personally i am delegating the responsibility of storage from myself to whoever is hosting as long as i pay their fee they will take care of replication they will take care of everything that is related to man data management and storage uh yeah this issue sometimes has a uh, thing because you know especially if you are running an llm or an ai system then i am sharing my data onto the cloud so there my data may be very expensive or i might have taken a lot of effort to collect that data so i might be reluctant to share my data onto the cloud uh, so at that point sometimes what happens is i can get to keep the data with my machine and the compute power only is from the other machine so it's like a peer to peer from a data sharing perspective i never lose the uh, ownership of this data uh, the data remains with me and it gets pulled by the gpu machines or the programs running there from my system so as long as my internet speeds are good this can still work not always a workable solution uh, from a high performance computing point of view but if i am extremely sensitive to data this might come otherwise i'll have to sign a security policy i have some encryption standards uh, some some data integrity and confidentiality standards and agreements using which i can hand over the data to the start uh, to the cloud company and they will take care of it so that's another way to manage anyway i don't have to worry too much about security and compliance uh, because uh, already the data centers have been tested for their security completeness and for implementation of various cyber security platform so uh, the owner shifts from me to the cloud company so that's all i had to talk about uh, cloud computing as a solution for high performance computing we'll take the journey forward uh, in further uh, videos